Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a pop art inspired digital portrait in Photopea. So open up Photopea, click new project, retitle your project pop art, and we'll be working in inches, uh, 10 by 10. DPI is still 72, click create and a white canvas will pull up. Now what you'll want to do next is go to file, open in place, and choose a picture of either yourself or of a famous celebrity. And the reason we're choosing a celebrity is because pop artists are very inspired by popular culture. So in my case, I'm using Dwight Schrute from The Office. Now the next thing you'll want to do is stretch your picture so that it fits the 10 by 10 canvas size. Uh, stretch it pretty large. Uh, if you don't see those, click on the top move tool and hover over the transform controls. Make sure that that box is checked off. All right, the next step is to click on the top layer, right click it, and click duplicate layer so we have two pictures. Then make sure your top layer is selected, click the drop down arrow, and click on color dodge. Now these next steps might seem really weird, but just hang with me, it'll all come together by the end. Click on the top layer again, and click on your keyboard controls, control or command I to invert the image. Now it'll probably all disappear, but that is okay, just hang with me. Okay, the next step is to go up to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur, and a box will appear. Move it out of the way. Now, what we're looking for with this sliding bar is a fine balance between too colored in and not at all. Uh, we want it to look like a drawing. Now, 5.1 works for me. I'm going to click OK and click on the top layer one more time. Next, right click and go down to flatten image, click on that and all of your layers will compress. Now what you'll do next is go down to the bottom, click on the new layer button and let's drag the background to the top so our layer, our new layer is on the bottom. Click on the layer, next we're going to create a new shape just to fill that section in and I'm going to fill it in with white and creating a square over the entire thing. Now it won't be visible because our background layer is on top, that is okay, that will come in handy later. The next thing that we are going to do is click on the background again, we're gonna go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and threshold. This will give us a black and white outline that looks more comic book style. Now again, find a good balance where there's not too much gritty grain going on, um, but also enough that we can see a nice black outline of the face and all of the details. Once you are done, click over uh, to hide that and right click on the top layer again and click on clipping mask. The next thing that I want to do is get rid of the background areas in my picture so it's just his face. So I'm going to click on my picture layer and add the layer mask using the button down in the bottom section. Now you can see that a new little square has appeared. That is my layer mask and we know that layer masks work in black and white. Black conceals, white reveals. So I'm using the black color and just using my paintbrush making sure that I am coloring on the layer mask, not the layer. Then I'm just going to erase everything and get rid of the background. Now we know that Roy Lichtenstein often used polka dots to create his skin effect, so click on the bottom layer and we're going to add in the polka dot effect by clicking file, open in place, and clicking on the polka dot JPEG that you downloaded previously. It will load and appear in the background. Now what you're noticing though is that the layer mask from the above layer is still covering some things up. So what we're going to do next is click on that layer, click on the drop down arrow, and click on linear burn. The polka dot should go behind the outline so that it looks like a coloring book page with a polka dot background. Next comes the fun part, we get to start coloring in everything. So click on the polka dot layer and add a new layer, so a new layer appears above the polka dot layer. Next you get to choose a color, I'm going to choose blue for his uh, jacket. And what will start happening is whenever you start coloring, your color will appear underneath the black outline so that your black outline is still on top. Uh, a good trick to use whenever you're coloring and trying to change your brush size is using the bracket tools to increase or decrease your brush size. It'll save you a lot of time instead of having to go up to the top and change your brush size every single time. Have fun! <laughs> Okay, 
Next, we're going to add a speech bubble. So click on File, Open in Place, and open up the PNG speech bubble file that you downloaded previously. Click Open, and it will appear in your layers. Now we want to move that speech bubble to the top layer, so click and drag it to the top so we can color it in. Now click on your gradient tool, right click, click on the paint bucket tool, and we're going to fill it in with white, a classic comic book look. So click on the paint bucket tool, says smart object must be rasterized. So right click, rasterize, and fill it in. Then we can click on the move tool, hold shift, and shrink it down. You can move this and rotate it any which direction you want, but make sure that it's not covering up too much of your portrait. Next, we're going to add text. So in your tools panel off to the left, you should have a text button. Click on that and then click anywhere on your canvas to activate the text. Then uh, after your fonts load, you can start typing in whatever phrase that you want your character to say. Now I'm giving a classic Dwight Schrute phrase here, um, and then I'm going to change this to look more comic book style instead of just this basic font. So if you click on your font, move it over into your speech bubble, you might need to click on the text tool again to make all of the fonts appear at the top. Highlight all of your text and click on the drop down arrow. Now the best way to do this is to click on all and then click on it again so nothing appears. Then you can click on the comic section so it just uh, shows up all of these different comic book style fonts. Now my favorite is VTC Letter Pro. So that's the one I'll be using. You can use any of these. Choose one that you think looks the most classic comic book style. Once it loads, you might need to change the size, so I'm increasing it just slightly so it still stays within my speech bubble, moving it around, and there we go. I'm going to click on a separate tool so it disappears that box, and that looks pretty good to me. So next, you want to save file, save as a PSD if you have not done so, and then export it as a JPEG. Click on JPEG and make sure that your quality bar is scooted all the way up to 100, then say save, and it should be downloaded. There is your pop art style portrait created in Photopea.